Azure Virtual Desktops are a way that we can add in virtual machines using client operating systems like Windows 10 or 11 inside Azure services. So I'm logged into portal.azure.com and I'm going to go to where it says all resources, just so you can see a list of all the resources I have. There's all different kinds of things in here, virtual networks, workspace, storage accounts, things like that. What I want to do is I want to create a virtual desktop, but I can't just create it directly. It's almost like creating a remote desktop application set up on a Windows server. There's a lot of steps you have to do before you get to that point. So let's take a look at the different steps and get started. Here's the list of assignments that we're going to need to do, such as creating the resource group, create a virtual network, create a host pool, etc. Let's start by creating the resource group. I'm back at portal.azure.com. And if you don't see the resource group in your list, just go ahead and type in resource group in the search box, and then it'll show up and you can go ahead and add one. So I'll click on resource groups. This is also assuming that you already have an Azure subscription. If you don't have one yet, you'll need to log in the first time, create an account and add in your credit card, and then you'll be able to add in your subscription. So assuming that that part is already done, let's go ahead and continue on. You can see I've already got multiple resource groups. The reason we need to create a resource group is because this is like a bucket. We're going to need to create a lot of other things, but we have to put it in something. And a bucket is the best place to put it. And in this case, that bucket is called a resource group. You can see I already have my subscription. Now I need to create the resource group name. And I'll call this the virtual desktop dash group. And this next part is really important because if you don't put all of your different resources, the things we're going to create in the same region, then some things may not work right. So I'll choose US West and click on Next. Tags are just something used to create organization for billable purposes. So I don't need to worry about that. And now I'll click Create. And this doesn't take very long and it's all done. I'm going to go back to home and back to my search box and I'll type in the second thing we need to do, which is to create a virtual network. And I'll click on virtual networks. Now, one of the interesting things about doing all this is I can do this within creating the virtual desktop pool. However, if I do it all there, you may not understand exactly all the different pieces and what they do. So just for teaching purposes, I'm going to go ahead and do this outside of the pool and then add them into the pool once we're done. So that'll make a lot more sense at that time. So I've already created the resource group. Now I can tie that to my virtual network by selecting it here. And now I'll give this a name. And I'll call it virtual desktop dash network. Now I'll choose the IP address. By default, it's going to pick a 10 dot address, maybe something you haven't used before. So I'm going to choose the subnet that it's picked for me, which is 10.4. I'm perfectly fine with that. You can see that it creates an address space, which is going to be 10400 slash 16, which gives you 65,000 addresses. But then it adds a subnet. So the difference between the two are that you can put a lot of different subnets inside your address space. And it's picking a slash 24, which gives you 254 addresses. It's just the way that Azure does it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this default subnet that it's created along with the address space at the top. So if I wanted to, I could create additional subnets that would be 10.4.1.0, 10.4.2.0, and they would all nicely fit inside this 10.4.0.0 slash 16 address space if I chose to do so. And I don't really need to do that, so I'll go ahead and click Next. I don't need to make any other changes, so I'll just click Next, and I'll go ahead and choose to Create. And this doesn't take very long to create. And that has been created. I can go to the resource and take a look at the different properties. But I need to get on to the next step. So we've created our resource group. We've created our virtual network. And now it's time to create the host pool. I'm going to go back to home. 
and I'm going to type in either Azure Virtual Desktop, or if you see the icon there, you can just go ahead and click on it. So once again, you can click on the search box if you'd like. Now, before I can create a virtual desktop, as I mentioned before, I have to create a host pool. So I'll click on the Create a Host Pool, and then from there, I can create my desktops. Once again, my Azure subscription, the resource group, we'll choose Virtual Desktop Group, the pool name, I'll call it Jump In, and the location, you can see it defaulted to something other than what I was using before. So I want to make sure that I go down and choose the exact same one I chose last time. Now you have the validation environment. The validation environment just basically allows you to test things out before you apply them to production, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it as no so we can keep moving forward. Then you have the option for the preferred app group type. You see you have the desktop and you have the remote app. Remote app allows you to deliver applications remotely, and desktop is going to be where you just allow those installations to happen locally. I'm just gonna leave it at desktop, and then when it comes to the pool type, Personal will allow a one-to-one -one selection between the user and the virtual desktop, and Pooled allows you to create a group of people that can access those desktops. So I'm going to choose the Pooled option in this case, just as an example, but you can do it either way. Breadth first versus depth first. Uh, breadth first is going to be a way of load balancing. So we can do load balancing where we allow a certain amount of virtual desktops to log in before we create it another one, or we can have multiple different people log in, and then we create the other one later on. So I'm just going to choose the breadth first, and then the maximum number of users per session. You can put whatever it is you'd like. I'll just choose two, but you can choose as many that works for you. And it's a good idea to test those out. Now, the next thing I can do is I can create a virtual machine right here, or I can choose no and do it later. I'll go ahead and choose yes to add this virtual machine now. The name prefix, that is going to be whatever your hosts start with as a name. So for instance, if I call this one jump in, then what's going to happen is the first virtual desktop it's created is going to be jump in zero, then jump in one, then jump in two, that kind of thing. And once again, I got to make sure my virtual machine location is in the same place every single time. I don't want to add in infrastructure redundancy, although you can do that for additional charge. And you've got the security type. I'll leave that standard. And here are your images. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a Windows 11 multi-session, although you can add in with applications already pre-installed. So I'll choose that one. And by default, it's going to choose these two vCPUs and 8 gigs of RAM, but you can go ahead and change that if you need more or less based on your cost. I'm going to create just a single virtual desktop, but you may want to choose five or 10 or however many you'd like. Of course, you'll be charged per desktop to do that. Standard SSD is fine. I don't necessarily need any diagnostics separate from what's shown there. And under the virtual network, I want to make sure that I choose my virtual desktop network that I created earlier. I can also add in public inbound ports if I'd like, and then I can remote into that virtual desktop. It's not really recommended that we have public inbound ports because it is a bit of a security risk, but you can do that. I'm going to choose no, and the way I'm going to access this is through a web browser, and it will work just as well as, say, a remote desktop client over a public IP, but it'll be a lot more secure. You can also connect to this using remote desktop if you have a VPN tunnel between your network and Azure. That requires a lot of extra setup, and there is a cost, roughly about $5 a day from what Microsoft tells us, but that could vary. Under Active Directory, there's no reason to choose your on-premises Active Directory if you've got Azure Active Directory set up. So I'm going to choose that. I don't need to enroll in Intune, but you may decide you would like to do that. And I went ahead and added in a local username and password that's separate from Active Directory, just in case I need to log into it locally to fix any particular problems. I don't have an ARM template to add in. 
This is supported by Virtual Desktop Classic. We're going to be using the newer version, so this is something that you may not even want to configure. I'm going to go on to Workspace. I don't need to, and I'll click on Advanced and Tags and review and create. So I didn't need to make any other changes there. So now I'll click create. Now this portion can take up to about 20 minutes because it's creating the pool, then it's creating the virtual desktop, and it just takes a lot of time to do this. Once this is all set, then we can go ahead and finish up our configuration and start accessing our virtual desktop. If I go back to our list, you can see the host pool has been created, the Azure Virtual Desktop has been created. Next, I'm going to be assigning an Active Directory user and setting up access control into that virtual desktop. And you need to add in a role assignment and add in members as well. These next steps after creating the host pool and the virtual desktop actually go fairly quickly. It's just the host pool and desktop portion that does take quite a while to do. The resource has been created. I'll click on Go to Resource. And now you can see that we have a virtual desktop ready to go. There's lots of other settings. I'm just going to click on the virtual machines for the virtual desktop. And you can see that it appended that jump in with the dash zero, just as I said that it would. And everything looks the way it should. So I'm going to go back to the host pool. Now I need to assign some permissions. So I'll click on Application Groups. And there's the jump in dash application group. Now that was automatically created. I didn't create that myself. It just became created when I created the pool. So I'm going to click on Assignments. And I'm going to click on Add. And off to the right hand side, you can add in users or groups. and click Select. So now my user account has access to the DAG or Desktop Application Group. Although now I'm available to log in using the pool, I need one additional assignment. So I'm going to go back to Home, and I'll just go into my Virtual Desktop Group, which is the Resource Group. So I'm going to go up to Access Control, click on that, and then I'll click Add. And I'll choose Add Role Assignment. And there's lots of different role assignments. This is all part of the role-based access control that Microsoft is moving to. So I'll type in Virtual Machine, because that ultimately that's exactly what it is. And I'll click on Virtual Machine User Login. And I'll click Next. And once again, I will select Members. I'll add in my account and click Select. I'll choose Review and Assign. Looks good. And now it's added that role assignment. Now take a look at all these different options here. You can choose who has access to this resource. You can also set up deny assignments and create a custom role as well. Here's your deny assignments here. You have your roles and you have your classic administrators. We're not using classic administrators anymore, so we'll continue to move forward with the latest and greatest. I'm going to do this one more time, but this time I'm going to add in a role assignment for an administrator to the virtual desktop. And I'll choose Administrator Login, click Next, and basically just do the same thing. The difference between the two are going to be whether a user will have complete administration over that virtual desktop or just basic user. And if you don't want them to be adding their own applications or making any changes, then you don't want them to be part of this administrator group. But in my case, I do. I'm going to go back home once again. I'm done there. I'm going to click on Azure Virtual Desktop. And now I need to create a workspace. So I'll click on Workspaces. And I'll click on Create a Workspace. And what the Workspace does is it basically allows you to push out applications off to those users if you choose to do so. Uh, but it's going to be what it is that they see when they log in. So I'm going to choose my virtual desktop group, my subscription. Everything's good there. Now I'm going to call this Workspace name 
virtual desktop workspace. And we could have a friendly name as well. I'll call it workspace one. And once again, we have to choose our same location. So I'll click next. I'm not going to register any application groups at this time. So I'll click next, advanced, tags. We don't need to worry about that. Review and create and click create. So there really wasn't a lot of customization there, but we need to have at least one of our workspaces assigned into our virtual desktop. Now I'm going to click on go to that resource. And I could have assigned an application group during the creation, but I just wanted to show you these properties so I can go ahead and add that in separately. So we'll choose the one application group already created and click Select. And now that has been added into our workspace. Now there can be multiple application groups if you need to use those. I'm just going to have the one so now I'm going to go back home and I'm going to go into my host pool called jump in. And there's our pool once again. Now I need to set up RDP access, although we're not getting in using remote desktop protocol over a public IP address. We are doing it over a web browser. So I need to allow that to happen. So I'm going to paste in the semicolon target is AAD joined and then colon I colon one. And that just lets any applications know that this is going to be an Azure Active Directory joined computer. So I'm going to paste this in at the very end, just as you see here and click save. Another good reason to do that is because it also supports single sign on. I'm going to click on Overview and my virtual desktop, virtual machines, and everything is available. One of the last things to do is going to be to copy this URL and paste it into a web browser and connect to our virtual desktop. I'm going to open up a new tab, right click and paste it in. And it's loading. And there's the virtual desktop session. So I'll click on that. You can choose what you want to access as far as local resources go. You can choose whether or not to have it continue to prompt. And now we're opening it up. It's asking for my username and password. And there it is. My session is opening up for my virtual desktop. Now, if you have any Azure Active Directory resources, such as storage that you'd like to connect to, you can do that as well. And there is my desktop. I, of course, have access to all the same menus and any applications that I might have decided to set up. Azure Virtual Desktops works in a similar way as Windows Server Remote Desktop Application Mode, but you can configure it instead in the Azure Cloud.